time I spend with Jesus. Sweet is the presence of the Lord, and sweet is the way He gently takes me by the hand and helps me down the road that leads to home. Greetings in the name of Jesus. I bless be back on WTJR to bring a Palm Sunday type of a message to you. After past the COVID and all those things that we can get together beyond our own church walls and get together across the world to proclaim the gospel. Today we call this message to look up when things are looking down because things are but I want to talk about how things were a long time ago. As Jesus was going into, on Palm Sunday, they call it, into the temple, hoping to see men praising God and worshiping God, had a wonderful following of people with him, praising God, spreading palm leaves on the road, putting clothes on the donkey's back uh, so to smooth his ride out and singing praises unto God and they were going to the temple. But things changed when they got to the temple. Inside, they found that they were buying and selling and using the temple for money and for gain. And it upset Jesus at that time. It's one of the few times when you've seen him overturn the hand to tables of the money changers and run them out of the temple and even told them at that time that my house is to be called a house of prayer of all nations but you've met it a den of thieves and I want to think about today as we believe that Jesus is coming back because the indicators are all around us that we're going into the times of the end it's not if we'd see him coming but God said when you see him coming and I believe the eyes of the real church is open today and realize that things are coming to a conclusion rather quickly. And we pray that God finds us doing what he wants us to do, preaching the gospel, learning to love each other as God loved us. You see, we had to be born again. God loved us even then as he loves the sinner today. Christ died for that very thing. But we had to be born again of the Spirit. Because all that was in the Spirit was the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So God had to remold us as we are still on that potter's wheel and will be on that potter's wheel being molded and make into the likeness of Christ until the mind that was in Jesus is in us also, that we love our neighbors as ourselves, that we love our enemies, but we don't like our enemies. The word like is far different than the word love. If you like somebody, you're saying, I like the way they are and who they are and the way they conduct themselves and I'd like to be that like that myself. And now Jesus seen us as we were sinners. He didn't like us that way, but he loved us enough to give us that opportunity to remold us and remake us, and he paid the total price to get that accomplished. Now we live in a world today that we believe Jesus is coming back, and many of us believe we're closing in on the end times because all the indicators are around us. We're witnessing all of the scriptures being fulfilled. God didn't say it's when you, if you see him coming, but when you see him coming, do these things. For instance, look what the world is doing to our children. There's a time in the past that the things that are doing to our children in this woke society that we're in today, that even the doctors would have been in prison for doing the things that they're doing. Critical race theory, trying to stir up problems within the people. 
in the latter days, it's going to be like it was in the days of Noah, where there was violence throughout all of the land. And now we see that daily. God help us. There's not a day that goes by that pornography damaged minds that we don't hear over the television or the radio where children have been victimized by sexual predators. You see, the devil sees his days are numbered, and the Bible says he will pour out his fury upon the inhabitants of the earth, and we're seeing the evidence of them. And I hope some are watching this program today that don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. But you must be aware of what's happening in this world and knowing the change that's coming upon this. There was a time when God said, Thou shalt not kill. He didn't say at what stage or what age. Thou shalt not kill. But they fight for the right. We have the right to choose. And they're asking for a right to legally kill. God, help us. God, help us. In our houses of prayer across the land, which there are all to be that, we call them churches, but the buildings are not a church. We are the church. The church goes to the house of prayer to pray that their supplications and wants and needs be taken to God. Because we see what religion is doing to our society today. That many are departing from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines literally of devils. Cancel culture doesn't mean just cancel Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, and our past leaders. It means cancel our very foundation, which was Judeo-Christian principles and values. Say the devil is on the loose, going through and forth through the world, seeming he, he can devour. And we say we'd like to see all saved, so would God. I wish not one would be lost. But the truth of it is, God said, my flock's the little flock. So don't follow the beaten path where the majority goes. Follow the straight and narrow path that leads through this wilderness with Jesus Christ, the guide, to keep us on the straight and the narrow. Looking forward to the prize of the high calling when it's all ended that we end up in the kingdom of God, being with God, with a joyous life where sin can't enter. See, sin is being dictated, promoted. He never thought the depths of sin, how far it would go, many of us. There was a time when a doctor would take a young boy or a girl, mutilate their bodies and say, God didn't do, basically are saying, God didn't do a good enough job on you, so we'll finish it for you. We'll make you into whatever you want to be. If, if you'd rather be a girl, we'll make a girl out of you. You want to be a boy, we'll take the girl, we'll make a boy out of you, which we know these things are impossible. Woe be and to the best pastors, the preachers, and the teachers that lead these kids astray. I'm afraid that we'll see after some of them get a few years on them after these things have been done, that you may see more suicide. What in the world caused me to do that? Well, the truth is that Satan has much influence. He even comes as an angel of light, seemingly doing things to your benefit, at the same time destroying us. And God said, I want you to look up when things are looking down. In this world today, they're looking down. I don't see, just like Bill Gates here a while back, said, I'll put $500 million 
in this program to come out with digital identification and set it clearly over television as I heard him. Every person in the world, man, woman, and child, whether they speak, unspeak, known or unknown, must have this or they're not eligible for any governmental benefits at all. And I thought to myself, they're preaching the book of Revelation and don't even know that they're preaching it. Because God said the same thing. And I believe today that the latter church will have to be exactly as the early church was in the book of Acts, where it said they had pooled everything and they had all things common. And the latter church will be as the early church was. That we'll have all things common. But God said, I'll be with you. You may be the small flock, but I will be with you. I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you until the word of God is fulfilled in him. And we have become a finished product on the potter's wheel, made into the likeness of his son. That the mind that's in Christ becomes the mind that is in us also. For that, Father, we look forward to. We see the world falling prey to the wiles of the devil, just exactly as you said it would. Many would depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I'd like to read you a scripture from First Timothy here. In the chapter 4, the Word of God tells us here now that the Spirit speaks expressly, means, listen closely to what I have to say. In the latter days, some are going to depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. What we've been taught today in the woke system is the doctrine of devils. In the latter days, seducing spirits. God help us. In the latter days, there'd be a lowering of standards. There was a standard that we're supposed to lift and maintain, a high moral standard for living. And that standard has been Lord, to the point that it seems to be no bottom to it. It just keeps falling. Our children being mutilated, playing God with their scalpels and their knives. God help them. God help them. But the good thing we see out of all this is this. We see the end approaching. We see the end approaching. In the book of Hebrews 10, when you see these things approaching, not if you say the end approaching, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as a habit of some is, but all the more so as you see the end coming. And we see the end coming. I see the end of my life coming, a prize. I am the prize, the devil wants me and so does God. We're the only prize on earth that gets to pick the winner. I choose God. And yet God accepts me. As we see the day approaching, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Some of us, some of them probably call themselves Christians maybe, but haven't been to church for a year or two. Get together, be refreshed in the spirit. Some right here in the town of Quincy have departed from the faith. 
Might as well put the Ichabod sign alongside the window that the spirit has departed. God's flock is the small one. Be satisfied with such things as we have. God said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you and even in the times of the great tribulation as it approaches. God is with us. God is a winner. They say everything has an equal and an opposite influence. Up has down, big has little, strong has weak. They say that within, according to that, an equal and opposite power, then the devil has the power of God. No, for this reason, God is perfect. The devil is imperfect. So he can't be a winner. God is the ultimate winner. The one that created the heavens and the earth and all that is therein, including life itself. Every life to God is precious today. He said, I knew you when you was formed in your mother's womb. We call it, they call it, it's just a fetus, it doesn't mount anything, it's not a real person. I had a son, was born prematurely, his name's Christopher. He only weighed six pounds. They sent him to St. John's Hospital until he weighed five. Said, we don't know if he can make it or not, he's so small. But he certainly weighed five pounds and he became healthy and there was a lot of prayer offered up for him. You see, I still believe that God answers prayer. He has for me or I wouldn't be a well man today. God answers prayer. That son of mine has a business down in Palm Bay, Florida, a recycling management organization down there that he runs six foot four inches tall, 235 pounds. He was alive. Don't kill the kids. In this day and age, even if a woman wanted to be permissive and lead a permissive lifestyle, she still doesn't have to murder. She doesn't have to get pregnant. There's prophylactics, there's things. So what I'm saying is they want the right to choose. No, they want the right to kill God help us. And I believe I wouldn't want to be in the doctor's shoes that would take the knife to a perfectly healthy child and start removing body parts. Sounds evil, doesn't it? Yes, Lord. Well, Lord, let our faith arise again and the winds of doctrine fall. Let's turn our hearts towards heaven, Lord, and listen for your call. Let unity arise with faith and love abound in all. Lord, let the strong winds blow again and let the fire fall. Cleansing, purifying, fire of the Holy Ghost. Let it fall. Yes, Lord. We sing songs like, God bless America. And God has blessed America. The youngest of the nations became the strongest because our foundation was Judeo Christian values. But now we're adding wood, hay, and stubble to our foundation that's crumbling. We should say, Bless God, America. Not so much as God bless America. The Lord that I love, stand beside us and guide us with the light that descends from above, from the mountains to the prairies, to the oceans white with foam, 
Bless God, America, our only hope. Bless God, America, our only hope. And I want to share a scripture with you. We don't want to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. It's a habit of some is. Prayer changes things. A lot of people use the scripture, if my people are called by my name, but humble themselves and pray out of healing their land. Forgive our sins. They say there is no God. Where do you think we came from? We didn't make ourselves. But we're here. Somehow. Oh, it was an accident. Some sub-microscopic thing exploded and made the whole entire universe. That takes a lot more faith to believe a story like that. That in the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth and all that is therein, and everything was perfect. Some people say, well, I don't believe God could have made this whole system in six days. I said, have you not read? With one day of the Lord, maybe it's a thousand years. He didn't say it is exactly as a thousand years. Maybe it's a thousand years. Maybe it was as a million years. Maybe it was as a billion years. But he formed us from the dust of the earth and made us who we are today. People created in the image of God. It don't get any better than that. Let us try to live up to our creation as God created us with love, with hope. I've come over the years of preaching the Bible as one big love story. And the whole message is teaching us to love. Not necessarily like, but teaching us to love, to love our enemies that we may be even with love, minister salvation to them. And I want to say before I'm through here today, we don't go to church on Sunday. We go to the house of God, which we've chosen to use the same name that God did. My house shall be called the house of prayer of all nations. The church goes to the house of prayer to pray. And if my people would do that, I'd heal their land. I'd forgive their sins if they're sincere. You see, you can trust God. The devil comes as an angel of light, deceiving many. But if what he has to say doesn't align with the word of God and have nothing to do with it. The word of God is a verifier. The gospel of Jesus Christ asks us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to them. That we're not under the Old Testament law, but by grace we are saved through faith in God. And without faith it's impossible to please God, but as a rewarder of those that diligently Seek him. How do we seek God? Through prayer. God, I just pray that the message that I had to bring today, I felt I needed to, as I see the way the world's going, crumbling, crime, totally out of control. You asked us to come out and separate ourselves. Come ye out and be separate. Taste not, touch not, handle not that unclean thing. Have nothing to do with the unfruitful works of darkness. And if you don't know Jesus, 
you have no hope. No wonder that they have to fill their bodies with narcotics, booze, anything to hide from reality instead of turning to reality, accepting what God offered freely to us. Life everlasting, peace, joy, and comfort. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Some's going to be departing from associations or organizations in time to come as they see it departing from the faith and given over to seducing spirits and will look for a place to come where the word of gospel is preached, not watered down, but meaning what it says and says what it means. If you do, we invite you to the house of prayer in Kinderhook. It's a very family oriented church where love abides and abounds and blessings of God seem to be with us always. I'm pastor of the church. I've been there for the last 35 years. Some people say, Pastor Cook, when are you going to retire? And I say, God never said anything about retiring. So I have no intentions. No intentions at all. But we invite you to our house. If you don't know Jesus, come to the house and learn about him. We pray these things in his names. God bless this facility, WTJR, for giving us a pulpit sometimes to preach for larger than the ones in our houses of prayer that we can reach more people. God bless this television station. Don Ed, Karen, Jimmy Wilson, all the ones that have sacrificed everything to bring the gospel to you. In Jesus' name, we give them thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Let God be God and his enemies be scattered. Thank you, Lord, for this. And sweet is the way he gently takes me by the hand and helps me down the road that leads to home.